here's Johnny. You are our May Queen. Come back to kill you all. Is that me? That's him. I don't know, he's got a feeling about it. Let your head rest in my hand. You owe me. You mean like hide and seek? I wish you'd. Welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be a different and exciting video. I'm gonna be sharing my top 10 movies for no reason at all. But if you know me personally, you know that I love film and I aspire to be in the film industry when I get older, even though I'm already old, but you know, life happens, quarter life crisis, things that I don't know what I wanna do and how to get there. But one of the main reasons I started a YouTube channel is because I love editing and cinematography of movies. So I'm gonna be sharing my top 10 favorite films or the ones that come off on the top of my head. I do love a lot of movies, so these aren't my favorite favorite, it's just the ones that I realize I always keep coming back to. But I'm gonna be sharing them with you guys and why I love them. So if you're interested in this video and you do enjoy most of my videos, please subscribe down below if you aren't already. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy any of these films. And also so you can get notified when I upload a new video, please hit that notification bell down below. So let's jump right into this. So the first movie, which is one of my ultimate and favorite movies, is The Shining. Here's Johnny! Now, this movie has a lot of mixed reviews because I recently read the book and after seeing this movie years ago, I don't know how to fail after reading the book, but I still love the movie nonetheless. Now, it's completely different or kind of spoiler alert it's different from the ending that happens in the book but i still love it i just love the way that it was shot i don't know what about it i guess like the whole 70s vibe of it and the hotel just the whole set design of the hotel is what i love and the colors and how they stick out and it's not too creepy it's basically like a psychological thriller but really just like the camera motions of the movies like the one scene when he's hacking away at the door like that shot that just follows him as he's doing that it was just so like brilliant to me and i'll blow your house in <laughs> seeing that that movie was filmed so long ago and that they had all these creative ideas for it now i'm not a film expert like i said so i'm not using any terms that are probably correct for any of this also, I'm wearing a hat for no apparent reason. It's just my hair looks pretty bad today. So, we're gonna stick with it. Yeah, but this movie just gives you that kind of creepy feel. I don't know if that's weird or like serial killer sounding, but it kind of makes me want to go to the hotel. Like that's how good it feels and looks to me. But basically, it's just about a family where this guy ends up taking this job as a caretaker of a hotel and he brings his wife and his son along to stay there for the winter time and basically it's all about cabin fever and how you can go crazy when that happens being stuck in a place with people and you can go insane that's basically it the next movie is one that actually came out last year and i actually watched it last night and again for the second time um it's a pretty disturbing one if you've never seen it and this is actually from the same creator as Hereditary. This movie is Midsummer. So it's either pronounced Midsummer or Midsummer, not sure. But the first time seeing this, obviously, I knew it was gonna be weird. I knew. I don't know what was going to end up happening, and I still don't know what ended up happening, but I do. I kind of get the whole backstory of it. Basically, this girl, I don't want to ruin too much, but I'll just say what you can see from the trailers. This girl goes with her boyfriend and his friends to, I think it's Sweden, and they're kind of like writing their thesis and blah, 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 but something traumatic happens to the girl before this. Um, so when she goes there, she's kind of having like, sort of flashbacks but like she's dealing with anxiety and stuff so she's trying to enjoy being there as well as trying to deal with this um traumatic situation that happened to her 
but then some weird stuff starts going down and some gruesome things so i just enjoyed it because of the visuals of it it was so beautiful so like well shot and it has like those hidden messages like throughout the movie that'll kind of like pop out at you the second time watching it around i definitely caught stuff that i didn't see the first time which is crazy even just things that they said that was like wow that's why that happened but yeah it's a really good movie i personally love it more than hereditary i know people love hereditary way more um especially for that one scene that happens but i don't know i just guess i love too much of the way this one was just shot but hereditary is great as well but i have to pick midsummer over it the next movie is it follows Now this I saw about two or three years ago and I actually watched this with my cousins and they're the ones that recommended it to me. This movie is like one of the creepiest movies because it feels like something that can happen in real life. Basically this girl ends up going on a date with a guy and you know, they do the thing, the thing. And something happens where he's like, I'm sorry, like just starts apologizing to her and all this stuff and she's like, what? What is going on? Basically, what happens is that you kind of pass this thing on to someone almost as if it was like STDs kind of saying and when you have intercourse with someone, they pass it to you and then dead people basically start following you and you don't know if it's a real person following you or a dead person that's following to kill you but the only way to get rid of it is if you have intercourse with someone else and then they have to deal with it so it's basically like almost like having awareness of stds and whatnot i think i don't know but it's just really creepy to me because i feel like that can happen like imagine you see a random person walking right towards you and you don't know what are they doing you're like contemplating are they about to kill me and then they just walk right past me you're like okay and they see another person and you're like okay they're just gonna walk right past me and then they end up killing you that's basically how it feels and i would be freaked out but this is like on the edge of your seat like creepiness like action is happening and you're like what is going on but also the vibe of it how it was shot everything about that um i think it was on like some streaming app i'm not sure if it was netflix i watched it on but i think you can still find it it was it's a pretty good one um it's kind of on the psychological end not too ghost like but still kind of like paranormal i don't know how to explain it but it's a really great one definitely check it out really good the next one is a tearjerker for me now the first time I saw the trailer for this movie, I hated it. I was like, I'm never gonna see that. Why would I go see that? Every time the trailer came on, I'm like, dude, can we just skip this and go to the movie I wanna watch, actually wanna watch? But once I saw this movie, the tears were flowing. And that is A Star Is Born. Gotta tell you a secret. I think you might be a songwriter. But don't worry, I won't tell anybody. But I'm not very good at keeping secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. And who would have thought that they would have been a completely brilliant duo together? And who knew that Bradley Cooper could sing? Because Shallow is one of the greatest songs ever. Basically, it's about this guy named Jackson Maine. And he is a country rock artist. And you can tell that he's like dealing with like a drinking problem and... He basically meets this girl in a drag bar and she sings and that's kind of like her secret hobby while she works at like a restaurant and basically you know catch each other's eye love at first sight blah 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 and it just goes through their relationship but then at the end part is where things start to happen in the relationship and you know shows his whole addiction side everything that he's going through and then tear jerkers is where the ending comes that i won't ruin for you guys but if you guys didn't know, A Star Is Born has like five different films. Like it was remade over and over. And it's all kind of the same, but storylines are a little bit different. And I didn't see any of the other ones, but this one, 
and I guess would be my favorite because I didn't see the other ones. I don't know. It didn't really make sense. But yeah, I love this movie way too much. I think I saw it about four times in theaters, like three or four times. And then after that, I watched it like four more times at home. And every time there's one single part that I cry at. And I think most people would agree. It's not the part that you think you would cry at, but it's like the whole movie, the last 30 seconds is worth it. So I recommend watching. The next one would be Blue Valentine. Now, I always like recommend this movie to people. And you know, it's basically a movie that there's no happy ending. <laughs> Sorry, ruined it. There you go. I think you can love somebody just by looking at them. But the thing is, man, it's like I felt like I knew her. You know, you ever get that feeling? Yeah, like you've seen her before and you just know her. Yeah. It's a feeling. But actually, you really don't know her. Yeah, I probably, I don't, right? But I just love Ryan Gosling. I don't know why. I tend to watch every single one of his movies and they end up being some of my favorite movies. Um, like this one, Drive, Place Beyond the Pines. Like all those movies are so great and so well shot. This one's basically like an indie film and you can tell it's very independently shot. And I think it's based in New York. I'm not sure because I think he was in Philly or she was in Philly, but he's in New York, like in Brooklyn. I can't tell, but this movie is very sad, heartbreaking. It just shows a whole relationship from the beginning and through the hardships towards the end. So that's all that there is to it. A little love story with a bad ending. The next movie is Moonlight. This old lady, she stopped me. She said, running around, catching up all that light. In moonlight, black boys look blue. You blue. That's why I go call you. Blue. This movie actually won the Oscars, if you guys remember, I think in 2017, 2016, 2018, I don't exactly remember. And it was that moment when La La Land won and then they were like, psych, nope, you didn't. Sit down. And that was crazy because I would have never thought that movie would have won. But it deserved it because, first of all, cinematography, yes, cinematography queen. That movie was shot so well from like one of the opening scenes. There's like a run on shot where the camera's just following them while they're talking for a while and it's a circle. And I'm like, that is so brilliant. I don't know why I love it so much. And then the soundtrack to it is so beautiful. And the colors throughout this movie is just so beautiful. Like, I don't know, it's just crazy. And it just shows a story about, you know, this kid of what he's, went through being young and his sexuality especially in his community where that's not really looked upon in a positive way um and it just shows his whole life throughout it and you realize that's him like he could be this tough guy but inside that's who he really is so i just thought that was beautiful the way it's written and shot it features mahershala ali which ooh, he's beautiful and Janelle Monet, I love Janelle Monet. I don't really listen to her music, but I love her in movies. I don't know why. Ever since she singed with Outkast, I just loved her. Um, and it also, I forgot the main character's name. I mean, there's three of them. There's the younger boy, which is actually in the TV show, The Shy, if you ever watched that. And the middle boy when he's like teenager age. I don't know what his name is either, but it also has the other guy, which I don't know his name, which you guys probably know if you've seen When They See Us, which is the heartbreaking series on Netflix. If you never watched it, you definitely should, only if you have a strong stomach for it because it can make you really, really mad if you are in agreement with the, on their side. But yeah, it has a lot of great actors and actresses in there and I definitely recommend it. I think it's on Netflix right now, so you can catch it on there, but it's a great movie, very heartwarming, and just shot so well and written so well. The next movie, which kind of reminded me of Moonlight, is Queen and Slim. I don't know how low-key we're gonna be riding around in turquoise Catalina. That's the whole point. We'd be hiding in plain sight. Do you agree to my terms or not? 
I ain't give you no damn cup. You owe me. This movie just came out in December and I saw it, I believe, about two times because I loved it so much. Now, some people have mixed reviews on it, but I just, once again, I love the way it was shot. Um, the music, the soundtrack was amazing. Um, it was written by Lena Waite, who also wrote the TV show The Chai, and it was directed by Miss Melina, who is on Instagram, and I love her stuff. She actually filmed the whole, like, she directed the whole Lemonade video for Beyonce, and I love that also. But this movie was just so, it gets you angry, but it's also just showing, like, a love story on the other side of it. Basically, it's about two people that met on a dating app and, you know, they're just, the girl just wanted to have a night out with the guy and, you know, something happens where, you know, a typical date night and he's driving her home and it's kind of the things that happens where it's like, it was just at the wrong time, like wrong place, wrong time. So basically they get pulled over by a cop and you can tell the cop's kind of being, you know, aggressive for no reason and an incident happens where it all relies on was that the right choice what choice did we make after this and you're just following them through this entire journey of just trying to get away it's almost like a 2019 version of bonnie and clyde so i really recommend it it could be hard to watch but it's a great movie nonetheless it was written very well um some people have mixed reviews just because I know it's a little bit slow at some points and it could have had a little bit more, but I just love the whole visuals of it and just the characters and it was also based in New Orleans, which I like a lot. So it's a really nice movie. It's definitely along the lines of Moonlight if you guys seen that, so definitely recommend it. The next movie is going to be a cartoon and it is one of my favorite stop motion movies ever, which is Coraline. Home? We've been waiting for you, Coraline. For me. Yep. Wasn't the same here without you, kiddo. I didn't know I had another mother. Of course you do. Everyone does. Now this is a movie based on the book by Nail Gaiman, which I actually read. And to be honest, the book is way darker than the movie. Um, it's kind of scary to be honest for a kid to be reading that book, but but I really enjoyed it and I enjoyed the movie as well I know my sister and my mom did fall asleep when I first saw the movie in like 2009 or 2008 um, I was only like 13 when that movie came out, which is crazy because now I'm 24 almost 25 and It's still one of my favorite movies. I just love the soundtrack even though they're speaking like gibberish, but It's just so I don't know. I just love the whole stop motion feel like I love stop motion it's just so crazy how much work goes into stop motion films that you would never believe like they're moving each figure like frame by frame and it's crazy how well it's put together so it's simply a cute little you know Halloween movie to watch I still watch it till this day as an adult but I definitely recommend it especially if you have kids great family movie to watch during the Halloween season the next movie is a World War II based movie and it is The Boy in the Stripe Pajamas. I wish you'd remember the chocolate. Yes, I'm sorry. I know. Perhaps you can come and have supper with us sometime. I can't, can I? Because of this. But that's to stop the animals getting out, isn't it? Animals? No, it's to stop people getting out. Are you not allowed out? Why? What have you done? Now this movie I actually watched in school when I was in 8th grade. Like you know we were just doing regular in class projects and my English teacher put it on for us to watch and that was probably one of the worst decisions she could have ever done. Because I was bawling my eyes out at 13 years old like what? Why? Like, why would you put this on for kids my age to cry at? This movie is so, like, sad. Like, I'm telling you, it's so sad that I think I might watch it right now again if I can find it because I just, I'm in that sad mood to watch it. But I am a big lover, which could sound kind of wrong in a way, but I don't mean it in that sort of way because I just love learning about this history um, of World War II and the Holocaust. I typically 
like to watch those movies to learn more about it. Um, a lot of people know that, but they know that I know like almost every thing about it, except for the fact that I almost spilled history a few times, but it's cool. But yeah, I just enjoy watching those films just to learn so much about that because it's really crazy because some people still think that that never happened, like especially in Germany. Some people think that it never happened, which is insane to me that people could think that, but it's just crazy what happened. Um, so in this movie, it kind of shows again like queen and slim like wrong place wrong time where something happens and it shouldn't have happened that way and uh it's just so heartbreaking but i definitely recommend it if you can find it i'm gonna see if i can find it on a streaming app but i definitely recommend the movie if you have a strong heart and a strong stomach to watch it it's very sad and involves young children so beware but it's one of my top faves and the last movie which I saw recently, which is also a war-based movie, and it is 1917. more of a dialogue person then you probably shouldn't watch this this is all based around cinematography mainly and just seeing emotion just through you know shots and visuals but basically just following these two boys or two soldiers that have to go on a mission that they know nothing about until they go to their general and he tells them that one of the soldiers brothers is is about to go out on an attack the next morning that he wants these two boys to stop. <laughs> so basically it's just showing them trying to get to these 1600 soldiers and to tell them to stop the attack for tomorrow or else they're all going to die. So you're basically following that through and some heart-wrenching things happen, um, specifically a scene with death that makes you feel like, wow, it's like real time happening. Like, is that what it feels in that moment as you're dying? And the reason why I think it felt like that is because majority of this, of this movie, basically like an hour and a half of it, is just one continuous shot, meaning that the camera is just going, going, going. So if they make mistakes, if they mess up, it's just going. Like I didn't even notice any mistakes. That's how well it was. Which is why I also think they left out a lot of dialogue because it probably would have been too hard to remember those lines without making a mistake. So it's just more of like action and just following through every step of the way. But it was shot so well. It is, I think it's in the Oscars for best picture because it was beautiful. Like I'm telling you, this is one of the best cinematic movies I have ever seen. And just the way that they did it. I know I saw a video on Twitter showing them side by side of the original shot versus post-production and it looks exactly the same. I'm like, that's crazy of what they did, but this is a really great movie, sad and heartwarming and so many emotions in one, it's just crazy, it just makes you feel so tired and like on the edge of your seat like, dude, like how is this happening, how is he still going, like it's crazy, but if you get a chance to watch it, definitely recommend it, it's still in theaters right now, so catch it while you can before the Oscars, see if it wins, I hope it wins, because I really enjoyed it a lot, but that's just me being a war film lover. But yeah guys, those are my top 10 favorite films of me rambling about them for no apparent reason. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, please give it a big thumbs up, and maybe I'll make some more in the future, maybe in some of my favorite songs and whatnot like I used to, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.